Hello everyone, my name is Tamiko Welch and I'm the adult librarian for the Junipero Cerro Branch Library. Welcome to, day, to today's presentation on your savings. This is the final installment of the America Saves program this week, intended to support financial literacy and is brought to you by the Alliance for Economic Inclusion. Please send us your questions throughout the program and we will have a brief Q&A after the presentation. Also, please join us in April for our program, Ready, Set, Bank, which will be April 1st at 3 p.m. at Junipero Cerro. We will discuss tips and tools on how to bank online. The sign-up information is on our website at lapl.org. Please welcome Jose Figueroa from America Saves and LA Saves. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Figueroa, and I'm the member of the Alliance for Economic Inclusion. And um, our goal is to really empower individuals and families to save money, um, especially for this uh, 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 during this pandemic, right? It's important to really understand the benefits of saving money. So we're going to be talking about your finance, uh, the benefits in savings. So your savings, right, during the pandemic, understanding the importance of uh, developing and spending plans. So. Uh, uh, understanding how to save is the key to have a better financial future. Next, please. So what is what is savings? What is really saving? Saving money is smart. When you save and spend money wisely, you will be able to buy things you need and want. So it's important to really develop an spending plan. That's the key. Develop an spending plan for you and your family. Next, please. So the key takeaway is um, it, it's important to sit, um, set some money aside, right? Every time you get income, um, even a small amounts can make a big difference in your life. So the key is it's important to be consistency as to how you develop an spending plan, how you're going to be able to save money for emergencies. So the key is small amounts can make a big difference when you start developing a spending plan. Next, please. So what does it really mean? What does saving really mean? Well, setting aside a portion of, of any money you save, you earn or receive, such as uh, any gift or tax refund. And we know that the tax season is here, so it's important to set aside a portion of it so you can increase your savings. Next, please. So is spending less money the same as saving money? Well, only if you save what you didn't spend, right? So saving money, it's saving for rainy days. To build savings, you spend less money and put some, right? And save some. And spend some and save some. That's the key, right? Understanding where your money is going is the best way to start savings. So I keep saying developing and spending plan it's going to help you, right, determine your finance. And it's going to determine your financial situation, depending where you're at. And we all understand that going through the pandemic at this time, it's very difficult because, you know, it's not easy to save money. But it's important to really start thinking and developing that mindset about savings. So save automatically. Pay yourself first, right? So every time you get paycheck, you get your 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 salary, it's important to set aside a portion of it. You can tell your bank to have automatic transfer from your savings to your checking account every time you get paid. It could be like $10, $5, $10. So the bank can do that automatically to your savings account. And save a portion of the tax refund. That's one way to increase your savings, right? So one of the things I personally do is every time, every year I do my taxes, right? I file my taxes, I save a portion of it. It could be a small amount, like $300, $500, right? Uh, on your savings uh, account. So another thing, another tips to kind of, uh, um, tips of finding money, it's uh, you wanna negotiate your, uh, your bills, call your service provider, believe me, there's, there's so many discount programs that you can get, but you have to call your service provider. You know, utility bills, gas bill, uh, water bill. Ask them if there's any way that can lower your bills. Um, you know, you might be able to get 20% discounts on the, on your bills, but you have to call them. 
So another thing, another tips is um, the 52 week money challenge program. Uh, basically you save a dollar a week. The first week a dollar, the second week $2, the third week $3. You will be surprised how much money you can save. So just small amounts can make a big difference. And once again, track your spending, make a budget. Understand where your money is going. The first step in cutting back expenses, right? So next, please. So why save money? To set your financial goals. One thing is very important is you want to develop a spending plan so you can accumulate money to, to use for a later time, right? Build an emergency savings fund. Let me tell you, 36% of the community of the population do not have a savings account, don't have an emergency savings. So our goal here today is to really empower each of you guys and challenge you guys to really start thinking about developing emergency savings. Perfect timing right now because of the pandemic, it's important to have at least six months worth of living expenses. Build wealth, retirement, save for retirement. Help you pay for big items, right? When you really save money and you have a better peace of mind. You have a sense of financial freedom when you have money saved and it will reduce the stress. Did you know that financial health and financial stress really play an important factor of it? When someone has financial stress, it can make an impact on your health. So it's important. Reduce your financial, financial stress and to avoid debt. When you have money saved, you're going to be avoiding debt. And just by the way, debt should be, you should have, um, debt should be under 30% of your credit limits. So that's going to help you reducing debt. Okay. 30% is the key. Next, please. So what are some uh, tips for finding money? What are some of the things that we can do? So ask your bank or credit union. Find ways that if there's any way that you can avoid maybe ATM fees. So every time you use your, use your debit or credit, you, you'll be surprised. You might be paying fees, $2, $3, $1. So that can add up at the end of the month. So ask your bank or your credit union if there's, any way, if there's any way that you can pay no fees using your ATM or debit card. And secondly, ask your bank or credit union about maybe perhaps offering you a free or low cost savings or checking accounts. Um, you know, you want to avoid paying this monthly service fee or monthly uh, service charge, $10, $5 every month or $20. You can save that. And that's something that you can, you know, you can use for um, opening up a bank account uh, for your retirement or for an emergency savings account. And third, it's important that when you shop around, just compare shop around, compare prices. You know, you might be paying um, something you know, expensive where it's because just because of genetic or brand. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really genetic. It, it will do the same work for brand. So shop around for better prices, right? When you shop around for anything that you want to buy. Next, please. Uh, next. All right. So where to build your savings? Where are some of the places where you can build your savings? Well, there are many options, right? Uh, one has, Advantage and disadvantage. Next, please. Home, right? You can keep your money at home, of course, but no fees, no rules, no additional cost to maintain, convenience, and easy to access. But what is the disadvantage? Well, it can be lost or stolen, right? It can be destroyed in a fire or flood or other disaster, easy to access. Next, please. Friends or families, no fees, no additional cost, right? Maybe convenient. But what are the disadvantages? Well, it can be lost or stolen. It can be destroyed, right? In the fire. And remember, your money is not FDIC. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation by the FDIC up to $250,000. And also, um, money can create problems. It can create conflicts, right? Between relationships, friends and family. So um, your money is not safe and secure. Next, please. So prepaid card. So you can have your money advantages with no fees, right? No additional cost, right? But disadvantage, it can be lost or stolen. It can be destroyed, right? And remember, oops, remember, uh, it's not FDIC. 
once someone has a prepaid card, the money can be lost and there's no FDIC up to $250,000 insured by the federal government. And just keep it in mind, um, when someone has a prepaid card, you might be paying high fees anytime you use your prepaid card to make withdrawals. So you just have to be very careful. Next, please. So savings, savings account. So you know that savings accounts are FDIC up to $250,000 by the FDIC or our credit unions, right? And you can have direct deposit from your employer to a savings account, right? You earn interest and easy access to it. And one thing, once you build a savings account, it's kind of open the doors for start building good credit. And, you know, you start building a banking relationship, right? So it's a great way to really kind of build a credit, right? And this advantage is that some banks and credit unions might charge you any fees, so monthly service fees. So ask your banker if there's any way that you can have a wave free savings or low cost free savings or checking accounts as well. And uh, just just be aware of that too. When you open a savings account, you know they they might give you a limited access to making withdrawals, you know, or uh, making the deposits. So th there might be a limited access to it. You know, so many deposits you can make uh, within a month. So next, please. All right. So other places are money market accounts. Money markets are really great accounts. It's similar to sort of like the deposit accounts, but you get higher interest rate on money market accounts and uh, certificate of deposits. Commonly, they call them CD accounts. It's a time deposit, specific fixed terms, and... Give me one second, guys. Oh, oops. All right. So certificate of deposit, like I said, is fixed or fixed uh, um, um, terms, fixed rates. So typically, when you have a, a CD account, you get high interest rate, right? And then uh, uh, the bank will give you credit. You know, will give a higher, better rates on it. Uh, and retirement accounts. Retirement accounts really tax, give you a tax advantage, right? So you can save for retirement and you can deposit up to um, uh, $6,000 if you're 59, if, if you're um, 50, if you're uh, 15, excuse me. If your retirement account, you can deposit up to $6,000 if you're 50 years of, or, or younger. If you're 50 or older, you can save up to $6,000, okay? So those are great accounts. And um, you also have IRA account, individual retirement account, employer account, like 401ks. You can contribute up to 15% of your 401k as well. So those are great retirement accounts. And of course, investment accounts as well. You can invest in the stocks, mutual funds, uh, but just keep it in mind. When you have a retire, when you have an investment with stocks, your money is not FDIC by the federal government. So you can lose or you can also make money as well. Next, please. So once again, the FDIC insures your money, FDIC, same thing with the National Credit Union Association insures your money up to $250,000. Next, please. Next, please. All right, the rule of 72. Basically, it, it's, it's, it's an old formula that is estimate how long it will take your money to double in value. So what you do is you divide the 72, divided by the interest rate, and it's going to give you, give me, could you please hold that just a minute? So, so the role of the 72 is, uh, so like I said, you take the 72 divided by the interest rate, and that's gonna take you, Give me one second, guys. And that's going to uh, basically, uh, the result is that the, it give you the estimate of year to double the money. Um, assuming that uh, on this, on the, let's say, for example, a CD account, um, it will give you, uh, there's no uh, no change in the interest rate or the, uh, the term is fixed, right? So typically a CD account is, you do it for like a year or two years, it's fixed you're not allowed to make the positive withdrawals because it's a fixed term. Next, please. 
So next, please. So save it for unexpected expenses, right? So, so why save for unexpected expenses? Well, we know uh, because life happens, things happen, right? Unexpected events happen. So it's important to really understand how to save money. And I keep saying, because of the pandemic, what we're going through right now, this, uh, you know, disaster, this is the reason why all of us should have an emergency savings account because things happen and it's important to really have, uh, you know, some savings, right? It, it just, uh, if any event happens, just what we're going through right now. Next, please. So emergency savings funds. If you pay, if you pay for unexpected expenses with money that you have saved, you avoid creating debt, right? It takes time and commitment. You know, to say it really happens, um, you know, it, it takes time, right? It takes commitment. And it's a cycle. It's worth doing it. It's an important step to improve your financial health, right? It's the foundation that you're building. So it's important. So next, please. So anticipating changes to income and expenses, right? So it's important to understand, one, so your income and expenses can change right? at any time, right? Anything can happen. I lost my job, right? Um, you know, basically, I have no place to stay. So things can happen. Um, so you may, you know, so it's important for you to understand that uh, you may have some bills that arrive maybe only once, a, you know, once or a few times a year, or every three months, or every six months. So it's important to understand that. So creating a spending plan is going to determine where your money is going, right? So your spending can, you know, can increase temporarily, right? Because you're going to have so many bills to pay. So next, please. So an emergency savings fund is part of the financial, right? The foundation of financial health. Setting money aside can really cover some expected expenses, right? So the key, the key takeaway here, the main point is that it's really important to build an emergency savings so you can cover some unexpected expenses, right? So next, please. Saving for your goals. Very important. So each of us should have at least at least three terms, three short-term goals. So all of us should have short-term goals, long-term goals. Next, please. So your hopes and dreams, right? So what do you hope for? What do you want to do in life for you and your family, right? That's the key. It's important to really create a financial legacy for you and your family, right? So if anything would happen, you are financially stable if something would happen. So set a goal. One of the things I, read, I always say clients is that you want to set a goal, right? Because when you actually set a goal, you actually, you can save more by having a goal in mind, right? So for example, if I want to save for um, buying a car, I want to visualize that I'm saving for to purchase the car. So it's important to visualize your goal and write those goals. Very important. Say for, let's say, for example, you want to save for college education. So it's important to start thinking about, I'm going to start early because, you know, going to college is going to take a lot of money. So it's important to start developing and spending and, and creating a budgeting, but saving, having the um, uh, set of goals, right, for what you really want to achieve in life. And so it's important to really start early about savings. So next, please. So when you actually set a goal, make a plan, basically you are more likely to achieve your goals because you want to write those goals down, right? You want to write them down. You want to write them, post them anywhere you can. It could be in, 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 in a place where you want to see them on a daily basis. So it's a reminder, right, of how you're going to achieve those goals because it's important to write them. If you, can, if you don't write them, it's going to be very difficult to really kind of uh, remember those goals and share those goals with someone that you can trust. Maybe they can give you feedback, right? And stay focused on your goal. Next, please. Create a plan to save a goal. Next, please. So match savings accounts. Did you know that it's an account that's been there for years? It's called IDA account, Individuals um, uh, Development Account. It basically incurs for low-income families to save for a specific purpose. And those accounts are run by, uh, for the most part, nonprofit organizations that kind of help you save for a specific goal. 
in his uh, IDA account for it could be for uh college savings account, retirement account. Next, please. And the purpose of those, uh, like I said, those IDA accounts are for job training, college education, if you want to start a small business, or if you want to purchase a home. Um, so you can save for, you know, like you said, for uh, start up a business. So for, the way it works is if you save a dollar, uh, the nonprofit will, will match dollar for dollar. Those are great accounts to start with. Next, please. Next, please. So, so I'm part of this uh, um, America Says Week. We're a local campaign. We're now here in LA. It's called America Says Week. And please take your phone now and go lasave.org, or you can send us a text. So, for the most part, it's when you actually take a place, yes, you own promise. It's your own promise to save money. So, you set a goal, right? Make a plan and save automatically. Pay yourself first. Next, please. So you can send us a text to 877-877-LA-SAVES, and you can take a promise. You don't promise to save money. And you can save money for retirement, save for uh, buying a home, uh, take a vacation. And it's your promise to save. Please take the phone out, and I'm going to challenge you. So the you can say it. Can you next, please? So it's basically you give us your name. So on your web, la .org, you give us your name. Um, you give us your email, right? You, you tell how much you want to save for and for how much you want to save for. Just say 12 months. And so every month, you will get reminders, tips how to save money. So it's just, uh, it's just a reminder, tips how to save money. Next, please. This is just a sample method of uh, a secondary method. Like let's, let's say you don't have email, right? And um, you can complete a paper pledge. So give us your name and uh, send your text. Uh, and then we'll send you, and then you can remind us every month how to save money uh, for uh, anything. Rainy days, take a vacation, uh, purchase a home, or we'll save for emergencies. So it's just a uh, just a reminder. Next, please. And lastly, this is just a resource. Once you take the place to save money, you will get resources, tips how to save money. And you will get quarterly newsletters, how to save tips on different resources. So I promise. And I want to uh, make sure that you guys take the promise to save money, okay? So please, um, now um, I'm going to open it up with questions. I'm going to send it back to uh, uh, Caroline. Thank you for the opportunity to present. And remember, saving is important. It's going to give you um, the better financial stability when you actually save money for retirement, which is in general, say, for, uh, uh, to create a uh, financial freedom, right? So thank you, Tamika, for the opportunity to present, and uh, we'll open it up for any questions. Um, yeah, there were a couple of questions in the chat. Um, the first one, like, let's say you don't have a bank account. What are some other ways to save or put money aside? And then another question was, what is a good way to decide how big your emergency fund should be? Did you hear the questions, Jose? Um, so saying. let me, um, sorry guys, I, for some reason I got disconnected. Okay, great. Um, so there are a couple of questions in the chat. Just wanted to make sure you hear them. If you don't have a bank account, what are some ways to save or put money aside? And then another question was, um, what is a good way to decide how big your emergency fund should be? I'm sorry, Carolina, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Repeat that question one more time, please. Um, the first one was, if you don't have a bank account, what are some other ways to save or put money aside? Where, if you don't have a bank account, well, what are some of the ways? Well, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> I, honestly, uh, the best way to really kind of um, build a financial future is by opening a bank account, savings account. It's the best way. And one thing to make it is that I, I wanted to make a, I wanted to let you know is that 
savings, it's important. So when you actually build a savings account, you're actually creating a, a better financial future for you and your family. So best option is savings. So if you have your money, you know, at home and in the mattress, it's not going to help. It's, it's not going to help. Okay. And another, someone thing, else another has- thing you can do is you can probably want to invest as well. Think about investing, right? Start mm-hmm. small. Think about investing, maybe in stocks. You know, maybe that's one way to kind of build a, a, a better financial future as well. Yeah, because I know um, in certain communities that are underserved, they use check cashing places and they don't trust banks. So we have to build the trust there. Yeah, speaking about that, um, about using check cashing places, um, it, it's really. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely recommend for anyone to stay away from check cashing places. They charge so much fees and you're not building a credit. You're not building a financial future. And then we have another question. Um, how big should the emergency saving fund be? Thousand more? Yeah, all of us, each of us should have at least six months worth of savings of uh, living expenses. Um, let's say just uh, uh, maybe uh, about ten thousand uh, dollars, if, if you can. But you know, because you want to make sure you cover right, your you make sure priorities right, rent, mortgage, food, bills to pay. That's the priority. Oh, and then another question just came in: Would the debit cards used for the stimulus payments also be a good way to have cash available? Well, the debit card cash available, well. Yes, you can have a cash available, of course, using those debit cards. Just keeping in mind, when you actually use those those debit cards or prepaid cards, um, you know, every time you withdraw money from an ATM or bank ATM, they're going to charge you high fees. We're talking about maybe 4 or $5, and you want to avoid, right, paying those high fees. Our goal is to save, right, find ways to cut back expenses and save money for emergencies. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This was really informative and helpful. So, um, is there any other questions, uh, Tamiko? We're good? Let's see, I, I think we got that covered. We got some great questions. Okay. okay. Uh, do me a favor. Can you tell Caroline? I think I'm able to do it on my computer now. Okay, great. Will do. Thank you so much. All right. Great, great talking. Great seeing you guys. All the best and stay safe and healthy. Okay, guys. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.